Um, go jump in the pool. <laughs> and my talk is not my talk, it's your talk, it's our talk. I am here for you and this is really, um, I call it the nitty gritty because we were born in this human body in this lifetime as, as far as I'm aware. I don't know if we have any cyborgs amongst us, but uh, this human body was given to you, was delivered to you without a user manual. And today in the 21st century, more than ever before, we are confused about this human body. Not only about what's coming up symptomatically or what's happening perhaps in our neurochemistry, right? But also the entourage of information that we're getting from the internet at all times. Who's read something contradicting before on the internet? Something. Yeah? <laughs> something. something, right? So everyone thinks they know and yet somehow we have no idea. And so I'll just say that with all of the work I do, my, my message is truly, don't believe me, verify me. And my main intention is to empower you to become a scientist in your own living laboratory, whereby when you make experiments, and I'm totally, I'm happy to give the parameters for all of the experimentation that you wanna do for the rest of your life, yeah? When you make those experiments, all of a sudden the knowing about health goes from here and becomes embodied to here and here. And once it's here, you can't deny it. And so that's the work I do, that's the tone, that's the quality of it. Uh, my background, as I mentioned before, is I'm a naturopathic doctor. I come from something called natural hygiene, which is the science of fasting, truly. Fasting is the backbone of natural hygiene. And it's the understanding and the belief that the body has the potential to heal itself. The body can and will heal itself allowed to, if given the environment to. Yeah? And so in the later years of my career, I've now left that, that career and I have an AI startup, as you may have heard before, quite a change. But in the later years, I became way more entrenched in epigenetics and uh, working with Dr. Bruce Lipton, perhaps you've heard of Bruce, yeah, dear friend, amazing man who in the 60s in his lab, he saw that cells started responding to their environment. Right? And that the cell itself and how it was programmed, a la its DNA, was not the essence. That there was something epigenetic or above the genetics. And so when we look to what is above and we look to beyond DNA, all of a sudden we start to see, wait a minute, the people I'm surrounding myself with are having an effect on my health? The things I eat, the places I go. The thoughts I tell myself, the stories I was told in childhood, all have a deep effect on who I am and how I show up in the world. So that's, that's one part of it, the epigenetics. The fasting is definitely another part of it. This is really, truly, uh, superhuman activation was one of my last little taglines in my career. And uh, I do believe that we are all capable of way more than we allow ourselves. In fact, if you all were sitting here today, I've just finished a five day fast, imagine if you hadn't eaten in the past five days? What's the first thing that comes up? Ice nothing. Cream. Eat nothing. Did you say hunger? Ice cream. Oh, it's ice cream. <laughs> <laughs> you can't tell if hunger would have been a <laughs> So, for most of you, my guess is, just from working with thousands of people, that it was like a root chakra kind of like fear, like holy shit, oh my god, like knees close, everything closes, scared. Right? Because food is one of our four needs, right? Or so we think. Now, many people don't know that the human body can actually thrive and survive for 40 to 50 days on water alone. Yeah, and I've done many long-term fasting experiments. And at the end of it, like I look like I'm 14, I could go and hike a mountain. You know, it's, it's, it's this amazing capability to connect back into what we call in yoga. I'm an ex-yogi now, but I had a big career in yoga. Prana. You've heard of prana? Maybe you've heard of it from Chinese medicine. It's called chi. Yeah, in Japan, ki. In Hawaii, mana. It has names all over the world. It is life force energy itself. It is aliveness, vitality. And so this is ingrained in every one of us. You were born. You were given life. That is the life that flows through you. So whether it's life manipulated through acupressure points or acupuncture, yeah, and your chi flows, and then once you're in flow or once you're in flow state, heard of flow state, big part of my work as well. Yeah. All of a sudden, it's like you're healed, you're whole, you're okay, you're here. And then you go back and close up and think that you're alone and tell yourself the story of separation, which is really the fallacy of human existence. And we're sick. 
and we're sad and we're lonely. And so the work I do is to try to really create maybe a transient gradient between that, <laughs> those two vacillations, because the nature of being human is that we will vacillate back and forth from togetherness to aloneness, yeah? from truth to telling ourselves the lies that we've been programmed by society to tell ourselves, like, I'm not enough, right? or for girls, I'm fat, or what if, that's a good one. Have you ever told yourself those stories? And so this is the nature of human existence. And so what I do, what I doctor, if you will, is the 21st century human. Looking at that and saying, okay, on a physical level, and that's the fucking easiest part. I guess I can curse here, right? So everyone's consent? Yeah. Okay. So it's the easiest. The hardware of the human body is so obvious. I'm gonna go through four foundations of health, hopefully as fast as I can, because the fact that you're here hopefully means you're somewhat of an intellectual and you can keep up with me. If you can't, there'll be a recording. But with that, the four foundations of health are things that you already know. But hopefully I'm gonna say them in a different way where I talk about the effect. The first one is hydration. Now I see some of you drinking water and I see some of you drinking dehydrating substances and that's all a choice that we make. <laughs> Yeah? So hydration, the human body uses and loses three liters of water per day on average, just by waking up and going around, yeah? So it's our responsibility to actually put that back in. Who drinks three liters every day? On an empty stomach without food? A little less than half of you, okay? So that's like a first little benchmark that you can go to, to be like, all right, well, if you're eating salty, fried, dried food, cooked food that's overly processed in one way or another, if you're having coffee, alcohol, all of these other dehydrating substances, if you're in the air conditioning all day or flying on airplanes all the time, hallelujah, welcome dehydration. This is at the root of most disease. And so simply curing this cures most things. And again, don't fucking believe me, verify me. Best way to do this, start drinking at least a liter of, if you can get mineral spring water in the morning on an empty stomach before you even think about breakfast. Make it a liter and a half if you're a go-getter. Right? Then a little later in the morning, maybe another half liter to a liter before lunch, and then through the afternoon, maybe another half liter to a liter. See what that changes, feel what that changes. How much of the human body is water, tell me? 70%. All right, so somewhere between 60 to 90% depending upon how dehydrated you are. Yeah. And that level vacillates and is going to dictate the water in the body. Now, who knows where water is? Is it like I have a bottle of water right here in my thigh? Yes. <laughs> no, I mean, right now, yes. <laughs> no, the water in the human body exists in the blood and in the lymph. Yeah, you've heard of these systems? Cardiovascular system, blood circulating around, circulating up here. Wait a minute, we need blood to be smart and evolutionize the world. I promised I wouldn't say revolutionize. <laughs> evolutionize the world? Evolve this world? Yes, we do need more flow of blood. So us as the evolutionaries, <laughs> right? If we're hydrated already, we took a winning step. That's like number one. The lymphatic system, which is where the rest of the water is, that's a little bit like our SWAT team, our defense force. It's what's gonna help to move things like disease agents in and out and around. If we're dehydrated, they're going to get stuck and collect. So movement, human movement, is really what powers the lymphatic system along with the river that's flowing through us. Who lives near a river? Think of your favorite river in the world. Is that river flowing or is it stagnant? My guess is it's flowing. If you think of a stagnant river, it's gonna get really dirty and ucky and grimy and you don't wanna go swim in it. But a river, like the Ganga up in Rishikesh in India, gorgeous, amazing, gushing. This is a river that we're putting through our body every day. It's, it's this fucking simple, no? You've never heard before not to drink water, but maybe, I mean you have heard for sure, but maybe you've never heard the consequence upon your body. And so, in my modality of leading fasting retreats, and now I'm doing them online so that anyone anywhere can do them, it's letting you know what your body feels like hydrated. Now, this is usually for women more than men, but women, do you notice when your rings get bigger and smaller, or after an airplane, if your legs swell, you just feel kind of puffy, maybe the shape of your face changes. I do believe that most people in the world today have a low-level autoimmune condition, yeah, because of the lifestyle that we have. But all of this, remember, is healable, curable, reversible through the environment we choose to create for ourselves. 
So these four foundations of health are paramount. The first is what? Hydration. Cool. Second, elimination. Let's talk about poo, baby. Let's talk about poo. <laughs> Sorry, I got the lyrics wrong. Um, poo. Yes. Uh, in other in other situations, I am called the poo guru because I teach a lot about poo. <laughs> it's like, are they gonna laugh at that or not? You had a little bit of a stunted giggle there. All right, don't make Indian voice note again. Uh, so yes, pooping. The human body, believe it or not, this is another one of these things you didn't learn in school, is meant to eliminate once per meal per day. I'll repeat that. Once per meal per day. This is physics, ladies and gentlemen. Something comes in, something goes out. Just like babies, just like dogs. Yeah. Do I have any proud two, three poopers in the room? Okay, so that's about the percentage that I get giving this lecture all over the world. About 98% of the world today is constipated. Yeah. You can, you're all in it together, so love each other and know that it's okay and nothing's wrong and then I'll give you the formula to fix it, okay? Yeah. But if you think about that, think about the river flowing again. If we have our waste that's meant to be eliminated held up inside of us and it's not eliminated, guess what? We're turning ourselves, this human body, which we've been gifted for our spirit to drive through life, we're turning it into a cesspool. And is that cesspool going to be able to evolutionize the world? Maybe not. Maybe not. So we better start pooping. Yeah. You know everyone's happy after pooping. If you see a dog poop, they'll poop and they'll wag their tail immediately and walk off. It's like, come on, you know, you do, there's more than 300 million nerve endings in your colon. You're going to feel really good when they're stimulated, all right? So by all means, I have a career as a colon hydrotherapist. I had a career as a colon hydrotherapist, so I've seen more poop than all of you combined. <laughs> gladly, gladly, because that is living laboratory to see, really, the state that the human body is in today. All right, so... I'm going to make a list for you, anyone who's taking notes, or those of you watching on video or in other conferences, taking notes, how to poop more. It's my favorite title of a list. <laughs> Show it to all your friends. Number one way we've already talked about because it's hydration. Easy. Easy. Right? Think of a rock in a rubber tube. You try to move the rock down the tube, it doesn't move, but then pour water in, all of a sudden it slides through. Right? Easy. Number two way to poop more. Find the biomechanical position in which you're meant to be eliminating. Squatting. Yeah, those of you who were in the beautiful yoga class this morning, squatting. Think of anyone out in the wild. All right, there's a lot of neuromuscular stuff going on here. First and foremost, we have the thighs supporting the soft tissue that's only co connected by tissue from the colon holding it up to support it. Moreover, the rectum, which is the end of the anal canal, it goes from a position like this, and you can't pour something out at a 45 degree angle, to directly up and down. Much easier to pour things out. When we bring our knees up to our shoulders, we release a muscle called the puborectalis muscle that when released, creates a clear passageway for poop to move through. Again, don't fucking believe me. Verify me. Next poop, I know you're all gonna think of me on the toilet. I'm very honored. <laughs> Go ahead. Chinese toilets are and squat. squat. For sure. Yeah. All toilets were originally squatting until we had our white porcelain throne, which has led to many white porcelain diseases. So with that, <laughs> Go ahead, put the toilet seat up, hop up onto the rim. You'll be stimulating the large intestine and reflexology on your foot. How convenient. You'll have to hold things. Okay? Or, if you'd like, you can get like the squatty potty equivalent. No commercial plugs here. But uh, a bucket or a waste bin, put it under your feet so that your feet are propped up in that squatting position. I'm telling you, it will change everything. Write me when it does. We'll have a conversation. You're I'll right. celebrate with you. Thank you. I've been pooping all my life like this. This is what, what was listen, the don't do it too much in public. Moment. You might break the porcelain because they're broken before. <laughs> yes, yes. Be careful. Uh, better to all. face the wall. All right, you ready for the third, the third step? Not joking. Of, of the list of how to poop more. Get your mind off of things. Your mind ruins most things in your life. Not only your poo, but also your sex, also your relationships, also your conception of the world. And so when our mind is flowing somewhere else, the body knows exactly what to do. So I recommend you pick up your phone, you go on your feed, or you go and read the latest Medium articles, right? Get your mind off of things, and I promise you, as soon as the prison guard leaves, the prisoners can escape. 
<laughs> Give yourself 10 minutes, three times a day. When I work with super big corporate people, I have them put in their calendar meditation in case their secretary sees it. <laughs> Just 10 minutes, three times a day. Go. Even if you don't think you have to go to the toilet, go to the toilet, squat there, be well hydrated. And if you get your mind off of things, something will happen. Yeah. Open the window. Do a one-month experiment. By the end of the month, something will have shifted. And be patient with your body. None of that talk of, oh my god, can I poop? Am I going to poop? <gasps> Someone's coming in this toilet. Oh my god, they're going to know I pooped. Oh, I can't take too long. Right? Excuse yourself after a meal. Say you have to go make a phone call. You have at least 10 minutes then. Make a two-second phone call so you're not lying and go poop. Okay? It's okay. Let's make poo less taboo. That alone can really save a lot of the world. All right? So... First one was hydration, second one's elimination is so important. And there are way other facets of elimination. For example, like pooping of the mind and the emotions. This happens through writing. I highly recommend that you keep some kind of writing practice where you just put pen to paper and it's a somatic experience. So it's not the same thing when you're typing in with your thumbs on your phone, right? Write for like eight minutes, nonstop. Just allow the pen to keep going and see what comes out. Just see what comes out. Don't believe me, verify me. Do it every day for a week and see what happens. Write me at the end. This is an experiment. Yeah. Elimination. Third, respiration. Good time to take a deep breath, everyone. Yeah. She's made of a lot of fire. So John Taylor before told us that the vagus nerve, which is channeled up the center part of the body, is stimulated by the diaphragmatic movement and our breath, which is 100% right on. We do have an ability to calm our nervous system, which we'll talk about in the fourth part, by breath. But most of the part of the fact of this, which is obvious, is that we don't breathe enough. So that circular breathing or that square breathing technique that he taught you, yeah? Try using that. Just be intentional with your breath. Ask yourself at least once a day, am I breathing? Usually at times where you feel nervous or scared or not enough. This is a way to hack your human system to come back to a place of okayness and aliveness and right on like alignment where you can create and evolutionize this world. So breath, respiration on the macroscopic level, but also respiration on a cellular level. So. Our cells, just like us, eat and poop and eat and poop. And this is all they're doing every day. They're eating and they're pooping. Hopefully they're pooping more than we are. Yeah. But for the cell to poop, what it needs is certain chemistry inside. And so who's ever heard that, like, your vegetables are good for you? I'm not going to stand up here and just say your vegetables are good for you because what's a vegetable? Who are you? Like, we're giving out mm. this pop health information like it's a lollipop. Yeah, and people then take it and suck on it, and they say, oh, I know everything about health. <laughs> right? <laughs> I've never done that one before. That one was good. We love you. <laughs> so with that, um, another whole lecture that I gave is how do you know what you think you know about health? Where did you learn it? What sources did it come from? How much of it came from outside? And how much of it came from your own experimentation? Because this is where we find truth, capital T truth, our truth. That's the only truth that ever existed. So with that, in cellular respiration, of course vegetables are good for you, but green vegetables specifically, yeah, the, the whole cleansing phase, green juice cleansing, yeah, chlorophyll, you heard that word in third grade, yeah, uh -huh. it's the, the <laughs> plant self-sourced food, chlorophyll, and plants make it from prana, from the sun, and in its molecular structure, it's nearly identical to hemin, which is the color in human blood, hemoglobin, yeah? And so when these two come into contact, they actually switch places and recharge one another. It's like identical twins in a class. Does anyone have good friends with identical twins? They play jokes on you by switching, yeah. So with that, when they switch places, all of a sudden, the dirty, toxic, we could call it, although that's vague intentionally, blood that's no longer viable for producing more life gets washed away. Right, through the lymphatic system, through the liver, right, or through hopefully the colon on elimination when you poop once per meal per day. So green, 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 green is needed for cellular cleansing and for that respiration at the cellular level. And so I openly say make half of what you eat by volume green. If that's going to be a green juice in the morning, 
If that's going to be, I don't know, maybe a green smoothie, have you had those? Like a little bit of fruit, some water, tons of greens. Yeah, I'm talking like half a kilo of baby spinach or more. Shove it in, right? It's all in there. That'll create a nice big broom to sweep out all 30 feet of your intestines and make a big, nice poop, lots of space to dump some toxicity. Voila, gone. Yeah, inner house cleaning, mind cleaning, yeah, heart cleaning, happiness, community cleaning. Okay, pooping more. Got it? <laughs> so maybe then at dinner you have a huge salad, and I'm not talking like a side salad, I'm talking like 20 side salads. Yeah, massive, giant, yum. Learn to love your salads. I can give you some resources if, if you don't, or we can talk. But like greens are so good, because look around you. What do you think nature wanted us to eat? <laughs> Green things, they're everywhere. Yeah? Okay, so we're done with number three. Number four is restoration. Just to review, hydration, elimination, respiration, and eat poop, eat poop. Yeah. Number four is restoration. So if we were in a bigger space, I don't like doing ifs, so we might do it at the end, just because I'm really radical. I would have you lay with your bum against the wall and put your legs up the wall. This is literally the fastest way to flip over your nervous system to turn back on the parasympathetic nervous system, which we all so deeply lack today. In the 21st century, we're almost always in flight or fight. Have you heard of that? It's the stress response. Flight or fight, yeah? It happens from, I don't know, seeing someone walk down the hall, maybe it's your boss, maybe it's your mom, maybe it's your ex-girlfriend, I don't know. But you start to, you know, palpitate, sweat a little bit, you're a little nervous, oh my god, what if I won't make that train? What happens if I don't pass that test, or if I don't get that job, or if Bitcoin doesn't go back up, right? What happens? <laughs> right? Our, our sympathetic nervous system stress response is always switched on today way more than ever before in human history, even when we we're living out in the wild, having to bend for ourselves and fight with other animals. We are two animals, yeah. And because of this in unnatural environment in which we live, that's, like really, it's like a domino effect, setting off a whole host of processes in the human body. Guess what? Healing, who values healing? Yeah, healing happens every single day in your body. Healing is cellular regeneration. Healing is what's going on in your brain while you're sleeping. Healing is blood flow throughout the body. Healing can and will only happen when the parasympathetic nervous system is engaged. And it's a little bit like an on-off switch. We're either stressed, even if it's subliminal, unknown, under the current, or we're relaxed. And if you can think about the last time that you were truly relaxed, do you remember when that was? Right now. Right now. <laughs> Good, I'm glad I'm, 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 I'm holding the yang and the sympathetic. I'm very glad. <laughs> you guys just chill. <laughs> yeah? So not many people today know what it's like to be relaxed. I'm going to give you an assignment. Can I do that? Yeah? I challenge each of you over the next three weeks, wherever you are in the world, to go to a restorative yoga class. Now if you don't have the funds for it, or if you have too many excuses for it, turn on YouTube, restorative yoga. Okay? This is really a revolution. I think that's like probably the most valuable thing in yoga today, is the embodied experience of the parasympathetic nervous system takeover.